Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, episode 6 of this series. We are running in March 1940, yet I feel a lot has happened. Not all of it good. We are fortunately still pretty close to our enemies when it comes to victory points. We have by no means lost this war. Yet, we have lost a few ships, notably Turpets. And, um, well, I have in the previous episode blamed it on the Light Shells which are just currently really the cluster. They don't have the pen to deal damage against enemy ships. And I tried refitting ships like the Bismarck and the Turpets class and the battle cruisers, but it's just tricky. So now I'm going to design a ship uh, loosely designed on one of the H class ships and make that ship as strong and hopefully in this campaign as useful as can be. Now there supposedly were a few H class designs you got H39, 41, 42, 43, 44. Um, considering my limit that I currently have on uh, my dockyard, which is 82,250 tons, and I could cancel this. You'll lose a part of the construction done so far. Yeah, but I would get probably 85,000-ish. Let's see what I can get first. Right, let's see what I can get first before I decide to make all sorts of drastic changes. Uh, this is the H class. Uh, let's say it's the H class. What am I gonna look for? 16 inch guns, 16 and a half. The other guys had 18.9 inch on about 89,000 long tons. Um, I think this is gonna be fairly close to the H41. Although it'll be substantially larger, substantially larger, and probably more firepower too. Okay, now we know that the enemy has a very high interest in using torpedoes, so I'm going to both prepare this ship to take torpedo damage, which means more water pumping capability, and I'm going to try and make it as maneuverable as possible, which for a ship this size, um, it's a bit iffy. It doesn't necessarily work, but we'll see how it goes. I am inclined to take this tower, advanced tunnel with, uh, sorry, advanced tower with funnel three. Reason being, 13 long range accuracy. The modern tower here only has five. Uh, and yes, you have those nice spots for secondary turrets, but considering the vast amount of torpedoes that I have been both receiving and eating in general, yeah, I'm not doing that. Uh, I'm not going to rely upon secondaries for this ship. This thing is a pure brawler. It is there to kill enemy warships. It's going to be an all-or-nothing armor scheme. It's going to have the best radar that money can buy. It's going to have the best serious copic range finder. Currently, we're running on standard steam turbines. I'm thinking gear turbines too. Gas turbines would be fun. And they're currently not... Well, they're 50 million more expensive. With gas turbines, you can slow down and speed up significantly faster. Um, sorry, you got acceleration here, 30%. Deceleration. No, no, no. I'm thinking of the turboelectric drive. This is the one. That's going to make the ship very expensive, however. Putting displacement at 70,000 tons, 68,000, 67,000. When would I need these? Ah, yes. Fuel efficiency is not the best. Yeah. I'm not really too concerned about fuel efficiency in this case, because this ship is not necessarily going to go very far anyway. Besides, I can still crank that up, uh, and I can lower this to carry additional fuel. As for gear turbines, 60, uh, 66,000. Diesel, 65, but I have a lower engine efficiency requiring a second funnel. Diesels, however, have that very nice low engine damage chance. Which means that even if the ship does take a hit, and it will, it's not necessarily going to shut the ship down. And when you're dealing with torpedoes, that is what you want. Turning circle is 714. Now keep in mind, this is an 82,000 ton warship. This thing is very, very large and very, very heavy. Uh, this could also come in useful. Oh, it's going to be tricky adding guns to this thing, though. It's going to be tricky. 
Electro-hydraulic steering, 748. Turning speed is less. Yeah, slightly. No, it's not worth it. This thing is going to run extremely expensive. It's going to also take ages to build. If I go for 18-inch light shells, is that feasible? Like an 18-inch... That doesn't even want to fire. Okay, that's fun. Uh, what's your pen? 15 inch? What? 15 inch? I'm looking 15,000 meters. That's ridiculous. Oh. There. Uh, now we're looking at 36 inch. Normally, I'd say the Germans have light shells, but... In this case, I'm not so sure if that's useful. There is one reason why I would want light shells, and that is to go with uh, semi-armor piercing. Because you get far less, or well, essentially more, ricochet angle, which means that even at a plus 80% ricochet angle, which means that the ship is basically looking at you like this, you can still get a pen. It just won't do a lot of damage. Um... Here's my thinking. I could run this with light shells, and that's going to reduce the ricochet angle even more, or rather make it bigger. It would allow me to basically, well, not ignore armor, but normally on, for example, the stern, um, the stern armor, belt armor, bow armor, it doesn't have that much. However, if you go for... Um, Let's say you normally shoot it with AP, it just bounces off because it's too heavily angled. With these kind of shells, you don't necessarily have that. But if this does not work, I have spent 35 months. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> That's just shy of three years. Um, I have spent, well, three years building this ship out. And I essentially can't use it very well. Um, I would have to go into refit immediately. Whereas if I go for capped ballistic shells and just heavies. Uh, by the way, I need more guns because this is looking a little sorry. This thing could do a lot of damage. Just flat out do a lot of damage. Hmm. Is this possible? Yes. This is more likely, anyway. Uh, I would like a barbette over here, if you will. Yeah, it looks alright. Ship is slightly overweight. Uh, if I reduce speed to 27 knots, then we're fine. Engine power is tricky. I'm expecting this ship never, ever, ever to be running solo. So that means I don't necessarily need acoustics on it, although it would vastly help. But it's 3,000 tons for a sonar array. That's a lot of weight that I really do not want to spend on it. Um, at 15,000 meters, by the way, this thing can now pen 35 inches of armor. This thing is no joke. If I swap back to gas turbines, no. It's gonna make it 294 million. Oh, actually the gas turbines are cheaper now. That's nice. But I do need an extra funnel, desperately. Ship's overweight. This is costing me 10% in torpedo, reduction, torpedo damage reduction. But it is 3,000 tons. Yeah, we're going to go with that. Uh, I still feel like this is not quite as I would like it. Something like this. Some aft weight offset currently. And I still have 3,000 tons to play around with. Now, I could start modifying the beam and draft. If I modify the beam, oh, then the tower doesn't fit anymore. 
there. This could reduce the build time, I hope. Yeah, to 33 months. As opposed to having it on zero, which gives me the 33 months still. Oh. What are you complaining about? I am not too heavy right now. Oh, I am, because I updated it by 0.1%. Fine, be like that. What? No. How did this happen? Okay, fine. Uh, 82250. There. 82250. The beam and draft sliders can be a bit annoying. If I reduce the draft, I become a smaller firing platform, but I also take more damage. So that's not necessarily ideal. Torpedo spotting is only 2,000 meters. Yikes. Let's update that. Uh, give me sonar one. Four and a half clicks. It's not great, but it should do the trick. Kind of. HE shells. Um, I'm currently running soft capped. Capped ballistic means they don't necessarily do a lot of damage. Um, well, they still do twice as much as AP. And their pen is about 9.5 inches on 15,000 meters. I'm really considering the 15,000 meters essentially the closest that I want anything to come to this ship because that's when they start loading a whole lot of 24 inch torpedoes at me. Which is rather undesirable, shall we say. Hmm. Armor. Let's reduce superstructure by a notch. Get the conning tower more. Get the turrets a bit more. Not too heavy. See, I don't expect to really modify the ship that much. It is just there as a huge firing platform for these 16-inch guns. And that's basically all it needs to do. Oh, I just got an idea for another ship. That should be funny. Um, yeah. These guns carry 200 shells per gun. We got a really high-end rangefinder. We got a really high-end stereoscopic... Uh, sorry, we got a radar rangefinder. We got a stereoscopic rangefinder 5 for better long-range accuracy. This gives me 42 long range accuracy. Yeah, we have quite a bit of bonus there. Base accuracy 42.1, long range accuracy 46.8. Okay, good. I think the ship is fine as is. It's just that her aft is a bit heavy. There. That'll be it. Okay, um, fine. The other ship idea that I have is the Super Deutschland. What if, what if you take the Deutschland class, this weird contraption, this is the pocket battleship, and you turn it into a Super Deutschland class. So this is the Super Deutschland. Um, let's, I don't know, I don't know, I don't want a battlecruiser. I want something fairly small. 42,000 tons. Yes. Deal. Sold. I want this tower. I want this secondary tower. I want triple 18 inches. There. There. Boom. Done. There's your Super Deutschland. 18 inch guns. No questions asked. Super Deutschland. How long is this going to take to build? 16 months. What? That is really nice. Now, I do believe in over-engineering my warships. Because that is mostly for me the way to get accurate. Aside from relying on crew, which is iffy. Uh, no. Yes. Yes. No. I don't need to go that nearly that far. No, 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 no. 6,000 kilometers. That should get us very much to where we need to go. When it comes to propulsion, propulsion gear turbines, gas, or diesels? 133 million, 123 million sold. 
We can do spoilers. And, oh, of course, that's going to boost my, uh, yeah, there you go. Range is fine. Pitch is a bit high. <laughs> like, maybe more than a bit. If I do this with a different hull, because I'm now using the... Um, battleship design. Yeah, modern battleship 1. If I use the modern battleship 2 and shrink that down, is that going to work any better? I don't believe so, because I don't think I can put an 18-inch turret on there. No, you can't. So that means it's going to have to be all the way out there again. This is... This is not what this hull is designed for. No. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, 25 knots. Bloody slow. If I reduce the beam... Oh, the pitch gets progressively worse from there. I could make it to 40% pitch. Which is going to cost me probably quite a bit of build time. No, actually it's a month. And the ship blooms by 14 million in price. That might not be a bad idea. When it comes to steering the ship, 688 turning circle. Um, whatever. Let's get electric one, 629. 533. 504. Sold. I like that. Standard ratio to shells. What sort of shells are we firing with these 18 inches, I wonder? What sort of weird contraption are we going to be using with this shell? Because capped ballistic is going to do in their battleships. But they don't have that many. That's my consideration. They don't have that many. So that means that the, the battleships are fairly useful, these guys, up until the point where the cruisers start to overwhelm. That's when I run into trouble. So I'm not sure if I need to go all capped ballistic on them. I could make this a ship that essentially snipes enemy cruisers by giving it semi-ballistic sh AP shells. Or even SA you know what, we're going to make this the SAP ship. Uh, with super high-end HE shells. <laughs> the HE shells almost have as much pen as the semi-armor piercing shells. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Yeah, I like this. Oh, this is a weird boat. It's also not very heavily armed. Oh, this is a weird boat. <clears throat> Good. Super Deutschland class. Secondary guns. Um... Do I consider this ship a sniper? If so, she doesn't have any secondaries to speak of. If I do not consider her a sniper, that means that she's going to be in closer to the enemy. 54 seconds. 43, that's a big buff. If I do not consider her a sniper, that means that we're going to have to fight at 27 kilometer range ish. Tops, 29 for the HE. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, this is going to range 18 or 15 kilometers. This is not, no, this is not what I need. This is not what I need. 27 knots, 28 knots. Price, 22 months, 171 million. Um, yeah. If something gets close to this ship, it's going to have a problem anyway. 563 turning circle. This is fine. I'm going to give it a bit of room to grow if we get new tech or if I need to evolve the ship further. Oh, hold on. Do I have sonar? Yeah, sonar 2 even. Great. Single hull. anti turp 2 is feasible. That's a bit much. Reinforced bulkheads. 547. Done. The Super Deutschland. Okay, we're going to order these guys. I would like to order some of these guys. 
Uh, I'm going to order one H41. Yep. And I'm going to order one Super Deutschland. Done. That's probably going to push me in the red. No, not yet. But soon. All right, we're going to take this convoy mission for this video as well. I have a Comet. Or rather, the Heavy Cruiser Comet and the Light... Just light Cruiser? No, I keep calling them Light Cruiser. They're just destroyers. The V13. Against Heavy Cruisers Niobe in Canada. I am confident in my abilities to have the Comet dodge. But I don't know what my transports are going to do. And that's my biggest concern. Because I cannot control my transports. Where is the enemy? Over there. 26 clicks out. Oh, my convoy's over here. This is perfect. Okay. Listen up, gentlemen. Listen up. We're going to eliminate a heavy cruiser and a light cruiser. And finally get some victory points for the German Navy. Because we are lagging behind. That is not what I like to do. A little while later, we have closed to within 10 kilometers, or well, just beyond 10 kilometers of the enemy. This is the heavy cruiser Niobe, and she has just decided to dump a whole bunch of torpedoes on my heavy cruiser. So, time to have the heavy cruiser turn course. Change direction. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, there we go. The light cruiser also decided to join into that fight. That's very kind of them, but I don't need that many torpedoes on my heavy cruiser, thank you very kindly. Let's have the DD do some donuts. Cause a distraction. Blocked? Interesting. Now, the AI has fortunately been running away from my transports for a long, long time. The transports are 30 kilometers out, and that means that these guns are absolutely unable to hit them. The torpedoes? I don't know. Because I believe that the torpedoes in this game run twice as long as is mentioned here. So the ship will launch them at 22 kilometer range. But effectively they have double that. So this means that the ship is going to be capable, Niobe, of hitting my transports at that range. That could be problematic. That could be problematic. Also, I believe they have just sent torpedoes after the destroyer. Here are the torps. Right on schedule to hit the comets. Let's slow you down to full speed. Get your cruise speed bonuses up. And also make sure that we get as much turning rate as possible. Because we're probably going to need it. Look at all these torps. That's no fun at all. I could try torpedoing the Niobe. 456 turning circle. The light cruiser is... Yeah, it's kind of behind it. Oh, the Niobe's turning, though. That's going to throw off my plans. Because if she's already turning now, then my torpedoes are going to miss. Just guaranteed. Comet, this is your opportunity to deal some damage. They cannot really damage you that badly right now. So this is your time to shine. Do that damage now, while you have the opportunity to do so. Destroyer is perfectly fine. Canada just sent a whole volley of torpedoes against the DD again. Canada still reloading her torpedo tubes. Good. Let's take out some of these Brits, shall we? That's a pretty piss poor chance to hit. Or to pen. <clears throat> hit chance is good, 22%. Blocked, 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 blocked. Great. Partial pen, fire damage. Perfect. Canada and V13 are duking it out. Not really doing that much. Damage to the main tower, yes. That's where I want the damage to take place. The more damage to the main tower you inflict, the more likely it is to get uh, saturated. And then it just gets destroyed. Meaning that the tower is no longer providing information for the rest of the ship. In more ways than one. It means the ship won't be as accurate. That's one. It also means the ship is not going to be as good as normally at controlling its damage. There's the torpedo spread. Oh, hello. 
Never a dull day with the Canada around. The Niobe seems to be in a pretty tough spot. A couple of really good pens here from the Comet. 50% chance to pen them. 45% chance to pen me, so I'm going to angle away slightly. Making the angle here a bit more slanted. And we should see dropping pen chances for a Niobe. Yeah, there we go. Less than 36, or 30... 35, 35, 34, yeah, that's more like it. But, they too are angling. Destroyed main gun! Beautiful. I am wondering if Niobe's turning around to try and get her torpedoes away. Canada... Yeah, screw the Canada, we're gonna launch torpedoes at that. Speaking of... So that was your plan, huh? That was your plan, you sneaky cruiser. Lobbing torpedoes my way. I knew you had it in you. Because I could quite literally see the torpedoes on the deck. Oh, you also launched against the destroyer? Really? Come on. Fish in the water. Good. Wow. Full pen with a 5-inch shell. H-E. Oh, right, these things have absolutely paper skin armor. Yeah, that makes sense. Flooding. Maintain AP pressure. More flooding. Yeah, you're gonna completely lose this cruiser. This is what happens if you have the smaller battles. You just get much, much, much more of an opportunity to do a lot of damage. Because you don't constantly have to manage the torpedo threat for 15 different ships. Well, rather, in my case, from 15 different ships. Where are my torpedoes at? Here. <coughs> Gotta be careful not to run into those with my own ship. The Comet. We're gonna focus on that heavy cruiser until it's dead. That's the plan. More flooding. Very good. Oh, torpedoes in the water. I think we'll flood it out pretty soon. The ship looks to be almost entirely capsized by this point. Destroy another torpedo launcher. See, they got a lot of torpedo launchers on there, but their guns are not great. And their armor is very lacking, because their main inch of main armor belt, six inch. Yeah, it's not going to cut it. Mine's 8 inches. My guns are bigger. My armor is stronger. You just don't have a lot of options here. And so, the Niobe loses. To, well, the Comet by doing absolutely nothing. 1% damage. The damage that they did do? Oh, really? They did hit him with a torp? Oh, no. All stop. See if you can do something about that flooding. And alternatively, we need to win this fight very, very quickly. Uh, actually... Yeah. If I keep the heavy cruiser between myself and the light cruiser, I'm going to have at least something of a torpedo wall, if you will. Like a physical object between myself and a very capable torpedo cruiser. I am, however, concerned that the DD is absolutely dead. Because it's fighting its buoyancy. Ship is stopped. Damn it. Which will hopefully allow it to deal with that flooding. Should have been firing HE at this target. AP's too much. Yeah, there you go. Engine. One of your engines out. <clears throat> Comet's still sitting at 99% structural. I wonder when the Canada is going to try and launch another set. Right now. Knew it. Look at this guy do some work. This is what I love. Boom. Conning tower damaged. Ship is flooding. Three engines are out of action. They still have their sight-mounted torpedo tubes. 
So they are not clear yet. But at this rate, give it a few seconds and she'll sink. Yeah, you're dead. Done. Done. Hefty damage to the V13, but it survived. Despite what I thought was going to happen. And that's six victory points for the Brits, but 2,800 for the Germans. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're gone. Wow. Minus 2.9 million. That's for repairing the ships, isn't it? That's for repairing the Comet. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have to, again, take a step back in my research projects. Because it's not feasible. And I would probably want to go for another battleship. So I'm gonna order another battleship. Another H-41. Built that. Nine million a month. It's gonna take so long to get these things actually out into the fight. 23 months. 33 months. <laughs> not 33 months. But when they get there, I really expect them to start performing. I hope that they will. Now, what's coming up next, in the next episode? This one. Kaiser Wilhelm der Große against Battleship Hannibal and Destroyer Arun. Um, I have a pretty serious advantage here. And so long as I can uh, make my light shells work, I can easily take down the battleship. Especially with the help from my destroyers. So tune in next time, which will be tomorrow. Same time, same channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. And you'll automatically get notified. That is, if you hit the notification button, uh, you'll automatically get notified of the next video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you soon for more.